Okay, we talked about um, disjunction, conjunction, implication, biconditional, XOR, etc. So th these are the binary operations we talked about. And in, in the context of implication, we also mentioned um, inverse and converse, etc. So uh, did we really cover all possible binary operations? That's an important um, question. And when you think about it analytically, What's a binary operation? It's an operation that accepts two inputs. Now for two inputs, you have four possible input combinations. And based on these four possible input combinations, how many distinct operations can you define? The answer is two to the power of four, 16, because you will define, let me put some, generic binary operation here without naming it specifically, uh, you will have to define four different outcomes or outputs for four possible input combinations. And each of them can take two possible values, either true or false, okay? So you will have to make a selection out of two for each of these four positions and that will give you a total of two to the power of four, which is 16 distinct binary operators. And these are all listed here. And in fact, they are listed in such a way that we have a systematic way of um, recognizing, analyzing, and naming them. And this is usually important in, in discrete mathematics, but all of mathematics. Um, if you come up with a good way to, to name these, that will help you process them. So what we do here is we represent a false with a zero and true with a one. So then my inputs become a zero here, a one here, zero and a binary number of one and one zero. If you treat this as a binary number, it becomes two and this is three. So I'm essentially listing inputs zero, one, two, three. And given these input combinations, okay, so th this is the order I define the outcomes. Okay, so for instance, this is zero, 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 zero. So that I name as F zero because my output um, constitutes a four bit binary number, which is equivalent to decimal zero. Similarly, this one, zero, 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 one, is named F1 because that corresponds to the binary number one. And this one, 0012, which is F2, and you get the picture, okay? So all possible um, binary operators in propositional logic are listed here, okay? And some of them, as I said, we have already covered. Some of them are um, simple, let's see. So F0 is obviously the contradiction Whatever input you give, it's false. It's just contradiction. It's never true. And this one, F15, is always true. Regardless of the input combination, it's always true. So it's, it's, the, it's, it's just plain true. And we also have the simple ones like P, where is P? F12 is P. So this is the same with P. And we also have Q which is F10, this is Q, same with this one. And we also have their negations, right? Um, not P here, F3, and not Q here, F5. And some of them we covered like um, P and Q here, P and Q, and where's P or Q, that's F14. Right, and what about implications? So P implies Q is F11, and Q implies P, its converse is F13. And we also have their negations. F4 is the negation of P implies Q, and F2 is um, the negation of Q implies P, 
and the biconditional is at f9 p if and only if q and xor its negation is at f6 right there are only two that we didn't touch up to this point and they are the negations of and and or the negation of or okay the negation of p or q we call nor so this here is p nor q so not or and this one similarly is the nand operator the negation of p and q okay so these are the all 16 possible um, binary operators in propositional logic and as i said this one is called the contradiction this one is called tautology always true regardless of the inputs and the remaining ones these 14 we call contingencies, contingencies, right? And the ones that are not contradictions, so contingencies along with tautology, we call satisfiable. Meaning that they are true for at least one input combination. Even if it is one, just the one, that is sufficient to make it satisfiable, for instance, this one, take this one, F1. It's true only when the input is P is equal to false and Q is equal to false. And it's false in all other combinations, but that, that is sufficient to make it satisfiable. There is, there exists an input combination that makes this operation true. Therefore, we call it satisfiable. And in fact, this is very important, especially in theory of computation, because determining whether a given compound proposition is satisfiable or not is called the satisfiability problem. You might have heard this before because it's a very uh, famous problem. And it's one of the essential difficult problems in um, uh, theory of computation and analysis of algorithms in terms of complexity. So in, in complexity theory, satisfiability is one of the essential problems uh, which actually describes a class of difficult problems. And those we are going to talk about when we talk about algorithms and computational complexity. 